Welcome back to Par Breakers Golf Academy. We're located in Limerick, Pennsylvania. My name is Bernard Sheridan. And today we're going to take a look at the swing of Jason Duffner, the winner of the PGA Championship. And we'd like to congratulate Jason on his first major win. And we're going to take a look at some of the things that Jason does in his swing today that, that can definitely help you. And most of those are going to happen through the impact zone, but we're also going to look at at the top of his swing. So, but what I would like you to notice here, and the reason why I chose this video uh, or these these uh, shots of Jason is because of, of a lot of what he's wearing here, um, and that is that white stripe that's on his arm there. So you can see how definitely straight that white stripe is hanging straight down from his body. So if I was to draw a line on that, we would see that his arms are definitely hanging straight down right over his feet there. So that's that's a nice that's a nice position to be in at a dress. Um, it gets that shaft in a great position as at a dress where it's just kind of going right through his belt loop there and right out his lower back. Um, so this is a really good position. His chest is forward. His head is down a little bit, so it appears that his arms are, or that his shoulders are rounded up just a little bit. But we're going to notice how, when he comes to impact, how that definitely changes. Now, now as you can see here, as Jason takes the club away, the face just looks slightly shut, ever so slightly, and it is a little bit. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want you to notice is that in this takeaway how his shoulders have rotated by this point uh, 45 degrees. If, if we look at this here and we're looking at about the same position right here we can see how his, his shoulders have rotated about 45 degrees his arms are still very much so in front of him um, and that's basically a nice one-piece takeaway there even though in his waggle he has a lot of hand action going on in his waggle. That's just a free tension. Um, but then once he starts back, it definitely has nothing to do with his hands. It's, it's all about his shoulders and his arms following. Okay? So as he continues to rotate and he gets his arm parallel to the ground, that's when we're starting to see that L happen through the shaft and his arms, Okay, which is kind of here and and then as he gets to the top that L becomes much more predominant because he has a little bit more wrist hinge going on there and so so that L is really going to be be more exaggerated to create that lag okay now it's almost looking like a V his shoulders are definitely um, have have made a full rotation here and his head has stayed very very steady over the ball so if we take a look at that and go back here to the beginning let's get rid of these two lines and go back here and we draw a line straight at the ball straight down his center right at the ball we'll see that there's very little head motion there only slight okay all the way at the top okay so this is something that that if you can achieve in your swing it's going to allow you to return to that to that ball very very square okay and consistently okay if we look here where that hinge happens for Jason on his backswing where we showed that L we can see that that L is directly on plane and that is a great position again we mentioned that um, even at this point uh, Jason's left hand is very much so in front of his core. Okay, so that's another. Um, that's basically another way of showing that it's a one-piece takeaway. Uh, his hands are remaining in front of his core as he rotates his shoulders back and his arms lift. Okay, um, so now as he starts back down, what we're going to notice is there's there's a slight weight shift to stack up that that left ankle and left hip. And if we go here to the top, we'll see that same thing happens where as he's at the top, he's just he's short, he's short of parallel. And as he starts down, that's when that, that lower body starts to rotate to bring that club into the slot. Okay, And 
that stacking happens, his head is still right where it needs to be. And, and by the time he gets to um, parallel to the ground, that shaft parallel to the ground, his left hand is right in front of his right leg. Um, and he's also pretty much, it's just about caught up to the ball now. Okay, so, so what's that showing if we look here down the line is, is how much right there, here we go, right there, as how much he has started to rotate his hips away. Right here he comes to impact, his hips start to rotate. And he stays again directly in front of himself and straight on plane. Okay, if we see here, there's where the, everything catches up. And what I want you to notice here is that when he has everything catch up to the ball and the club head is start, you can really see that shaft starting to flex and, and kind of uh, kick into impact. His whole left side is pretty much all in line and stacked. So his left shoulder, his left hip, his left arm, and his hands are, are right there too. Notice that that line is right on the back of his left hand, which is very flat and facing the target. And then as he turns, that remains that way. And we'll see now total extension here um, through impact, and that's the position that we see to the right, where he's right on plane, and... Both of those arms are fully extended now through impact. And again, as he comes through here, we can notice that happen where his arms are fully extended. It looks like his arms have actually rolled over because we're seeing the right arm kind of cross over the left here and, and in this fashion. Okay, so, and the reason for that is not that he's rolling his hands over, it's the natural release of the club head at, through the rotation of his body. And as he gets uh, his arms parallel, <coughs> excuse me, his arms parallel to the ground, we can see that, again, everything is still right in front of him and he'll rotate right out to a full finish. Now, as he gets to that full finish, here's, here's the thing that, uh, that I would like to see all of you guys try to achieve at that finish is, is getting that skull stacked over top of that left leg, over that left heel. Um, this is an absolutely fantastic finish. Here's the other thing that I want you to notice, and that is those shoulders are very level at the finish, okay? And if we look here, we can see that another example of that as he finishes through. And also, as he and another example is that his hands are very much in front of him, is that that shaft is coming out below his um, left shoulder and, on, and basically on plane, maybe a hair steep there, but really getting those shoulders level to a finish and having a pure release to the finish. So, some, some things, some notable things that we can learn from Jason Duffner's swing. And, and, and the main notable thing is, uh, is, of course, keeping your head steady at the top and then, and then making that stack happen into impact where everything is stacked, your left ankle, your left hip, and your left shoulder. And then at the finish, your shoulders are level. And, uh, and that's how you're going to get the maximum compression out of the ball and the maximum forward shaft lean at impact. And, uh, and this is what we can learn from, from Jason's swing. So take those tips to the range, try to finish in this position, and try to keep that head nice and steady on your backswing. So for Par Breakers Golf Academy, my name's Bernard Sheridan. Thanks, as always, for being with us, and we'll see you next time.